go, go, go with me, if you will, to Colossians chapter 3. You in Ephesians, go over to the book of Colossians. Look at Colossians chapter 3, if you will, in verse 8. Paul says, you used to live like these Gentiles around you, like the heathen around you. Verse 8, he says, but now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. I mean, put off all that evil stuff. Verse 9, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse 10, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You see, my friend, and, and when you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you become a new creature. If any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That is not only your old life, by the way. What Paul is saying in that passage is the old way of doing things. God's old program with Israel has passed away. All things are new. God has a different program in operation today through the letters of the Apostle Paul. Go back to Galatians, if you will. Galatians chapter 3, look at verse 28. Speaking about Christ, in, in Galatians 3, 28, Paul says, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. You see, my friend, in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the body of Christ, we all have equality in him. Now, what Paul is saying, don't get this wrong, he's not saying there's no differences. Now, the world says there's no difference between man and woman, and they know it's, that's not true. And nobody, you, if you lived on earth long enough, you know that men and women are different. They think alike, they act alike. And, and, and instead of uh, uh, taking the God-given differences of man and woman to make it work for God's glory, mankind tries to make everybody alike and messes up everything, don't they? Women are different than men. Well, Paul is not saying that when you look at the outward man, this person is not a Jew. A Jew is just a physical seed of Abraham, okay? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A Jew, back in time past in Paul's day. A Greek, Greece, Greek was the language of Paul's day. Uh, it, was, it was those Gentiles who spoke Greek. So it was just two class, classifications of men, Greeks and Jews, okay? But in Christ, that guy wasn't a Jew anymore. That guy wasn't a Greek. They were just in Christ. They were in Christ. Uh, look at verse 28. There is neither bond nor free. A bond. There was a servants. There were masters. The, some people were slaves because they were under, uh, they owed a man a debt, so they had to pay it off. They were a servant. Uh, and they were free men. But Paul says, hey, you're all one in Christ. There is neither male nor female. Now, obviously, Paul goes on to say that the head of the woman is the man. Believe me, God understands and he puts in his word that there is a difference between male and female. There's order there. The head of, the, of, of, of Christ is God. The head of the man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man. But in Christ, the man doesn't have more blessings than the female and the female doesn't have less blessings than the man. They all one in Christ. That servant doesn't have less blessings than the man who's not a servant. He has just as much blessing. A Jew didn't have more blessings before God than a Gentile because in Christ they're blessed with all spiritual blessings, aren't they, in heavenly places in Christ. Read the book of Ephesians, my friend. Ephesians 1, verse 3, Paul says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. See, if you're in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're identified totally through baptism, not water, spirit baptism, whether you were Jew or Gentile, bond or free, male or female, you had all spiritual blessings. See, it, it's in him. That's what the apostle is saying. Look at Galatians 3, verse 29. He says, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You see, my friend, God made Abraham a promise. God told Abraham that because of Abraham's faith, he would give him eternal life. Starting back there in Genesis chapter 12, when God called Abraham out from among the nations. Did you know, my friend, that Abraham was originally a Gentile heathen? How about that? And that God justified Abraham while he was yet uncircumcised, while he was still a Gentile heathen. How about that? See, circumcision in Paul's day was a big deal. God made a covenant of circumcision with Abraham and his seed, Isaac and Jacob, the nation of Israel. But Abraham was justified by faith ever before he was ever just, uh, received the token of 
circumcision. Romans 4 says. So being physical seed of Abraham doesn't mean anything today. Just because you're a Jew today, no big deal before God. You have to be in Christ. If you're a Gentile, you, in time past you were cast off Gentile dog. Today, you're in Christ if you trust him. See, that promise, read that verse again. Verse 29, Galatians 3.29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Go up to verse 16. Look at Galatians 3.16. Now to Abraham and, to his, and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. God the Holy Ghost, who wrote that passage back in the book of Genesis, is the same one who's writing it through Paul. And he says that seed that God is speaking about in Genesis is Christ. Now, if we're baptized into Christ, if we're part of the body of Christ, his body, then we are part of him. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, so also is Christ. As the body has many members, and all those members are one body, so also is Christ. If you're in Christ, you, you become part of that seed, and you become part of that, you become an heir according to the promise. Now go down to 29, go down to verse 29, Galatians 3, 29. Paul says, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now my friend, you know what an heir is. An heir is someone who will inherit. See that word heir has the word inheritance in there. And that promise is eternal life. God promised Abraham that he would live forever in the land. And he's going to give them, Israel, that land. You know, today, right now today, my friend, there's all these wars going on in that land over there in Israel, Palestine. Well, that thing goes all the way back to Genesis. Abraham had two sons originally. He had Ishmael and he had Isaac. And Ishmael's line and Isaac's line, Isaac, J um, Isaac uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, became Israel, they are battling over that land to this day. And it won't, that, nobody's going to have a peace treaty. It won't stop. That battle won't stop until Jesus Christ stops. Now, a peace treaty will come in the future after the body of Christ. It'll be the Antichrist. You don't want to make peace with him. But God is going to destroy all that. But there won't be peace in the Middle East until Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, comes and reigns. Well, you see, my friend, they're fighting over that land. Now today in the dispensation of grace, we're not promised an earthly kingdom like Israel in some land. The body of Christ is promised the heavenly kingdom. See, it's not until God writes the letters through the apostle Paul, Romans through Philemon, that he opens up the heavens and tells you, hey, there's a kingdom up there too. 